Qadr Arabic, Qadr transliterated Qadr, meaning fate, divine foreordainment, predestination. Yes, God knows where one will lead themselves, either heaven or hell, but the individual is held responsible according to their actions and choices for the outcome. Is the concept of divine destiny in Islam? It is one of Islam's six articles of faith, along with belief in the oneness of Allah, the revealed books, the prophets of Islam, the day of resurrection and angels. This concept has also been mentioned in the Quran as the decree of Allah. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Definition. In Islam, predestination is the usual English language rendering of a belief that Muslims call al qa wa al qadr al -di wa al -qudr al The phrase means, "...the divine decree and the predestination." al qadr derives from a root that means to measure out. <laughs> Concept Qadr is one of the aspects of Akita. Muslims believe that the divine destiny is when God wrote down in the preserved tablet, Al La Al Mafuz. Several other spellings are used for this in English, all that has happened and will happen, which will come to pass as written. According to this belief, a person's action is not caused by what is written in the preserved tablet, but rather the action is written in the tablet because God already knows all occurrences without the restrictions of time. On the other hand, the causal relationships are also part of Qadr, since human acts affect what's stated in the preserved tablet. Al -la al the phrase reflects a Muslim doctrine that Allah has measured out the span of every person's life, their lot of good or ill fortune, and the fruits of their efforts. Again Allah does not need to force anyone to do good or evil by interfering with his will, and nobody will bear witness that Allah did so. When referring to the future, Muslims they will cry out to them, Were we not with you? They shall say, Yes, but you caused yourselves to fall into temptation, and you waited and doubted, and vain desires deceived you till the threatened punishment of Allah came, while the archdeceiver deceived you about Allah." Quote, and if Allah had known any good in them he would have made them here, and if he makes them here they would turn back while they withdraw. Quote, nor would thy Lord be the one to destroy communities for a single wrong doing, if its members were likely to mend. If thy Lord had so willed, he could have made mankind one people, but they will not cease to dispute. Except those on whom thy Lord hath bestowed his mercy, and for this did he create them, and the word of thy Lord shall be fulfilled. I will fill hell with jinns and men altogether. No calamity befalls on the earth or in yourselves but is inscribed in the Book of Decrees before we bring it into existence. Verily, that is easy for Allah. A hadith reports that Muhammad said about Qadr, Ali narrated that one day the Messenger of Allah was sitting with a wooden stick in his hand with which he was scratching the ground. He raised his head and said, There is none of you, but has his place assigned either in the fire or in paradise. They the companions inquired, O Allah's Messenger. Why should we carry on doing good deeds, shall we depend upon Qadr and give up work? Muhammad said, No, carry on doing good deeds, for everyone will find it easy to do such deeds that will lead him towards that for which he has been created. Then he recited the verse, As for him who gives in charity and keeps his duty to Allah and fears him, and believes in Al-Husna, we will make smooth for him the path of ease goodness Surah Al-Layl 92-5-7. Sahih Muslim However, it is made clear that no person has the power to benefit or harm himself or others, and that guidance is only given by Allah, no one else has the power to give guidance. The Quran says, "...for those who do good is good reward and more than this, and blackness or ignominy shall not cover their faces, these are the dwellers of the garden, in it they shall abide." History There are only two groups who represent the extremes regarding Qadr. All Jabariya are of the opinion that humans have no control over their actions and everything is dictated by God. The other group is al qadiriyya not to be confused with the Sufi order, al qadiriyya and they are of the opinion of humans having complete control over their destiny, to the extent that God does not even know what we will choose to do. The Sunni view is in the middle between these two views, where they believe that God has knowledge of everything that will be, but that humans have freedom of choice. 
Among the historical proponents of the Sunni view of the doctrine were Ibn Umar was a strong proponent of this concept. Among those who criticized the Sunni view of the doctrine were Mabid al Juhani, the first man who discussed Qadr in Basra. <laughs> Sunni view Sunni enumerate Qasat as one aspect of their creed. Arabic, Akita. They believe that the divine destiny is when God wrote down in the preserved tablet, Al Lahu, El Mafas, all that has happened and will happen, which will come to pass as written. According to this belief, a person's action is not caused by what is written in the preserved tablet but, rather, the action is written in the preserved tablet because God already knows all occurrences without the restrictions of time. Dead link. An individual has power to choose, but since God created time and space he knows what will happen. God is without any bond of time and space. Therefore, what will happen has meaning only to humans, who are limited in time and space. An analogy is someone who watches a movie for the second time, who knows what will happen next, while for the first time watcher the next move is unknown. According to maturity belief, all possible actions are already created by God and humans just choose which action they follow. Even the decisions are predetermined, they happen on humans' own essence. <inaudible> Belief in al qadr is based on four things. Alm al -ilm, knowledge, i.e., that Allah knows what had been, what will be, what has never been, and how it could be if it was. He also knows what his creation will do, by virtue of his eternal knowledge, including their choices that will take place. Kitab kitabat writing, i.e., that Allah has written everything that exists, including the destiny of all creatures in Al Lau Al Mafas prior to creation. Mishat Mashiat will, i.e., that what Allah wills happens and what He does not will does not happen. There is no movement in the heavens or on earth but happens by His will. This does not mean that He forces things to happen the way they happen in the area of human beings' voluntary actions. It means that He knew what they will choose, wrote it, and now lets it happen. Al-Kalk al kalk creation and formation, i.e., that Allah is the creator of all things, including the actions of his servants. They do their actions in a real sense, and Allah is the creator of them and of their actions. <laughs> <laughs> Stages of takdir fate. There are five stages where Qadr is determined and prescribed, sent to creation, the decree of Allah that is written in al la al mafud before the creation of the universe. This destiny written in the preserved tablet is never changed and encompasses everything that will be. Allah made a divine decree after the creation of Adam. Allah took out all of the progeny of Adam i.e. all of the humans from the beginning of time until the end of time, and asked them, Am I not your Lord? And all of the humans responded, We testify that you are our Lord. Then Allah decreed to them who shall go to paradise and who shall go to hell. The lifetime decree. This occurs when a person is in the womb of their mother, specifically 120 days after conception. Allah sends an angel to put a soul into the person, and the angel writes down the decree that Allah has made, their life span, their actions, their sustenance, how much they will earn throughout their lifetime, and whether they will be a dweller of paradise or a dweller of hell. The yearly decree. This is during the night of Qadr night of decree, where Allah sends down his decrees from heaven to earth, in it he destines the actions deeds, sustenance, births, deaths, etc. of creation for the next year. The word Qadr should not be confused with Qadr, Qadr is destiny, Qadr is that which has been destined, i.e. decree, thus the translation, night of decree. The daily decree Allah decrees the daily actions of His creation. An example of how these categorizations help clear the idea of destiny is as follows It is possible that Allah sends a daily, yearly decree dictating that a person will get a profit. However, due to that person's good deeds, for instance, fulfilling the ties of kinship, being good to your relatives, and maintaining the relationship, Allah sends another decree increasing that person's profit. The reversal of the two decrees is all within Allah's knowledge and is recorded in the preserved tablet. The person himself knows nothing of his own destiny or of Allah's decrees, but what he does know is that if he performs certain good deeds, then he will increase his profit as in the example above more than if he does not do that deed. In the light of the above the following may be derived Our supplications do change destiny and are of much avail. Good deeds are a source of an increase in one's sustenance, and can avert calamities. 
Sins result in a decrease in one's sustenance, and invite calamities. Shia view Twelvers, along with other Shia sects such as the Zaydis, reject predestination. This belief is further emphasized by the Shia concept of Bada, which states that God has not set a definite course for human history. Instead, God may alter the course of human history as he sees fit. To show that there is no contradiction between being predestined, and free will, Shiites state that matters relating to human destiny are of two kinds, definite and indefinite. To explain the definitive one, Shiites argue that God has definite power over the whole of existence, however, so whenever he wills, he can replace a given destiny with another one, and that is what is called indefinite destiny. Some of these changes of destiny, thus, are brought about by man himself, who can through his free will, his decisions, and his way of life lay the groundwork for a change in his destiny as has been pointed out in the verse, truly, God will not change the condition of a people as long as they do not change their state themselves. Both types of destinies, however, are contained within God's foreknowledge, Shiites argue, so that there could be no sort of change concerning his knowledge. So the first type of destiny does not mean a limitation of God's power, since God, in contrast to the belief of Jews who said the hand of God is tied asserts, nay, his hands are spread out wide. So God has the power to change everything he wills and God's creativity is continuous. Accordingly, as Savani puts it, "...all groups in Islam regard Bada as a tenet of the faith, even if not all actually use the term." See also Al Qadariyya, Al Qadr, Surah, Laylat al Qadr, Will of God Footnotes References Savani, Jafar, Shah Kazemi, Reza. The Doctrines of Shi'ism, a Compendium of Imami Beliefs and Practices. I. B. Tories. ISBN 9781860647767. Reza. 1998. Concept of Qada and Qadr al-Qadr